Mere moments after finishing up our last record, we woke up in the wee hours to hop on a bus to get to our next destination, which is pretty much the best way to travel around the country. So for the rest of the trip, this is going to be our transportation of choice, and occasional mixing room of course, sometimes under the judgmental look of keen observers clearly worrying about a dangling dongles. Agadir is a coastal city 400 kilometers south of El Jadida and will set us back about six hours including a couple of stops. It's also a much bigger city with a demographic around the million which warrants more important infrastructures of course, including but not limited to an actual recording studio. And Midzi, the artist that we're going to record, was able to book a full day for free, a gift from the owner who was on vacation and more than glad to help him with his first record. A luxury that made us pretty happy considering we only had one full day scheduled for this recording. Midzi picked us up at the bus station and brought us straight to their practice space to pick up some instruments and the rest of the band. Mehdi insisted we took time to visit the jam space he calls home, which was a bit foreshadowing, more on that later, but for now, off to the studio we go. dream. A proper recording facility with an actual live room, a proper control room, an ISO booth for the guitar amps, and a booth for the drum, which was already set up. Ha 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 Wait a minute, is that gear? Oh my god, this is beautiful. Oh, rock and roll indeed, buddy. Oh mama, this is gonna be so easy. Easy peasy. Easy breezy. Easy as A, B, C. <laughs> Well, not really. My mother once told me if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. During the whole setup, we had noticed some sort of tension between Midzi and the assistant engineer, which I deliberately left out of this document for reasons that will soon become very apparent. We were just about to get back home when it was explained to us that despite the owner's blessing, the assistant engineer would not allow tomorrow's performance to be filmed, which is the point of this whole show and was made very clear with everyone involved. So we were left with no other choice but to pack everything back and find an alternative for tomorrow. Meanwhile, it was whispered to our ear that this assistant pulling problems out of thin air was none other than Midzi's estranged bass player. In reality, we simply fell victim to human nature's oldest vice. Good old jealousy. Bye bye now. The next morning, we started the day on a more positive note, but we still had to find an alternative. Sate. <laughs> this is Jezawiya, a musical incubator and artistic hub established over 30 years ago, which has since fostered dozens of artists just like Mehdi, who, you've guessed it, had us visit the place yesterday. Hey. Now, you may have noticed this snazzy character lurking in the background since the beginning. Well, his name is Raouf Sidi. He's a seminal figure of the Agadir music landscape. He's also the founder and owner of Jezawiya, making him the savior of our asses. And after yesterday's debacle, it certainly felt right to record in a non-toxic environment where the guys actually feel at home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. That's gonna be just fine. It's perfect. And it's got a lot more soul, too. Oh, yeah. A lot more vibe, eh? A lot more vibe. Yeah, hey. A bunch of radios. Shh. 
The setup was pretty quick and straightforward, as we already had a kind of a practice run, haha. -ha. Anyhow, that's a good thing, since we had to record six songs that day. We've decided to run everything through the Universal Audio 610A preamps to give the whole record some mojo and tie everything together in terms of tone. We've mic'd the drum the usual way, except we went for a well-spaced pair of clarions as overhead to give the drum the width associated with the genre. The guitar was mic'd with a 57, as well as taking a DI feed from the preamp section. The bass was plugged directly through this very competent head. Same with the keyboard. Mehdi! Ton ampli fonctionne? And same with Mehdi's gimbri. I tend to think that music is all about one's influences and how to turn them into your own thing, reinterpret them, if you will. How one gets inspired through these influences as well. And every now and then, an artist burns with envy to pay tribute to those influences. In this case, as you may have picked up already, Jimi Hendrix. Yes, sir! On est là! We did a quick sound check, which also sparked the usual progressive rock band arguments about where to punch right, which is something that does not require one to speak the language in order to understand. <laughs> Then we check that recording to make sure it was up to par. And since we obviously can't carry monitors around, the next best thing is these headphones. They're Focal Clear Pros. Their open back design allow us to easily communicate while we're listening, just as we would in a control room. They're also very revealing and accurately represent what was recorded. This helps us take crucial decisions, in this case, an incorrectly placed snare mic. Anyhow, after a few adjustments of said mic, it was go time. Everything went pretty smooth, uh, mainly due to the fact that they're all exceptional musicians. To give you an idea, here's the final mix of our favorite song recorded that day, the aforementioned tribute to Hendrix, Anna Wana.
Voilà. Ouais, c'est pas mal ça. ça c'est bon, exactement ouais. ça que je voulais. Ouais. Oh ouais. Ouais. Bravo les gars. Yeah, good oh, job, ouais. man. Good job. Ouais, yeah. After the basics, it was getting pretty late, but we couldn't leave without proper back vocals. And then the obligatory calcavo. As we got taught by our previous recordings, these things get loud. The clock struck midnight just as we hit record one last time. Yes. On that note, a second record was in the bag. And tomorrow is another day. And another band. In another city. Yeah.